Hi, um, I wanted to make a little video about sensory stories and how you can use sensory elements to encourage people to engage with different forms of literature and to really build up that positive, appreciative connection um, with perhaps someone with communication difficulties and sensory needs. I've worked with autistic people for almost a decade now and I've learned a lot from them. And one of the strategies that I find my students have liked is sensory stories. So you take, for example, a picture book, um, a, like A Friend for Henry or Bruno and Titch or Owl Bad, Bad Owl by Mary Louise Fitzpatrick. I love this one. Um, and you go through it and you look at what the person you were designing the sensory story for or a group of people if you're planning it for a class enjoy from a sensory point of view and you look at where that can overlap with the text of the story or in this case with the pictures of the story this is a wordless picture book um so i thought today because this is a video for poetry ireland that I would take one of my favourite poems and show you guys how you can take items that might just be around the house and use them to build a sensory story. And also, when we think about sensory stories, we often think about picture books and we think about younger learners, but actually, for a certain type of older learner, they're a wonderful, um, they're a wonderful tool, and you can use it to um, help them to engage with more complex poetry so that you can do actually quite age appropriate pieces of literature with them but with an added extra that makes it more appealing and more engaging for their specific set of needs. Um, I've chosen one of my favourite poems at the moment because I think I've been, I've been coming back to it an awful lot actually. Um, Emily Dickinson's Hope is the Thing of with Feathers. I think we're all hoping quite a lot now. Um, and it's one that I find very comforting and very nourishing for me. So I gathered up a tray of things that you can find around the house. Um, some of them might not be so easy. Um, not everyone has feathers lying around, but you can open up a pillow um, or, you know, kind of sometimes duvets shed and you get these, um, where are they? These little guys. Um, I've got a fan. I've got a lovely little carved wooden bird. Um, I've got some water. Some ice. Oh, it's very satisfying. I like it. Um, some breadcrumbs. Um, some some sweets. Um, and this is again like tailor this to the person. So if they like Skittles, Skittles. I went with um, edible rose petals because I had a jar of them. And they're like super fancy, so I wanted to use them for something nice. Um, and I have. I have different smells here as well. Now there are different kinds of sensory needs. So some people are hypersensitive, which means that stuff like ice, touch, um, scent might not appeal to them at all. They might find it very overpowering, but other people might be sensory seeking, so they love it. So just really think about designing something for the individual. And if you start from there, with trying to do something nice for someone else, you won't go far wrong. Um, but I have this lovely perfume. It smells it smells quite flowery and quite alcoholy as well. Um, I've got this lovely, this is one that a lot of people like actually. It's, um, but some people don't. Lavender, um, which is supposed to be relaxing. And um, if you want a more gentle scent, actually a scented candle can be great. You could light it to have it in the room. Um, you could allow them to smell it or sometimes there's a, if it's one with a lid, the smell can be gentler inside the lid and then kind of there's not um, the chance that someone, if kind of someone likes to taste things, that they might try to eat it because some of them do smell quite delicious and you know, you'd be tempted to have a go yourself. So with that in mind, um, this is how simple it is. You just like gather three or four things and where, if I was doing this, 
with an individual I might not actually have all of these things at once. Um, I might start with one or two really nice experiences or start with one verse and then kind of add to it to make it more surprising and more enchanting as kind of as we developed our um, our engagement with it. So um, I also have my ukulele. Um, so I'm gonna show you a little bit now how you can use the poem um, in a sensory way. So, okay, here we go. Emily Dickinson's Hope is the Thing with Feathers. Hope is the thing with feathers. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the veil is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea. Yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. So that's kind of how you would use basic items that are around the house to turn a piece of work into something more exciting and engaging from a sensory point of view. I hope that was helpful. I um, I generally start by going through it and making a list. Um, like in an ideal world, what 10 or 15 items would I need to make this good? And then you look at what you have and what you can get um, and think about the people that um, you want to be enjoying it. Anyway, start from there. Thank you.